impact our program. Thank you, Sago. How exciting it is to see so many people today in the call. Just get a quick peek of how many people we are at 304 attendees of the webinar, and I'm so excited to be with you today. Sago, thank you for the introduction uh, and to get us started. As uh, Sago said, my name is Desiree Lopez. I started just two weeks ago as a director of programs at the Future Skills Center. I'm new to the organization, also new to Canada. So I got here after eight years in the US. Uh, I got to Canada in January this year. So there's definitely a lot that is new and I'm really excited to be here. I wanna just to mention that I have a few FSC team members joining us uh, for this webinar. So Sago, as she already introduced herself, she's one of our program coordinators and really the person behind and also on the stage running this call for proposals. So we'll probably be interacting with Sago at some point in the next, in the next weeks. We also have Joanne joining us who make this all work behind the scenes. So thank you, Joanne, for helping us with the tech and to navigate through the webinar. Hello. And I'm not sure if Christine or Kelly are here yet, but if they join us, we'll make sure to uh, give a quick stop and say hello to them as well. All right, so um, I wanna mention also, we are having a webinar tomorrow in French, and I wanna make sure that I, the slides are working. Did it go through? Yes, okay, so we have the webinar, uh, the same version of the today, we have tomorrow fully in French. So it'll be at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So please, if you would like to be part of that version as well, register the same way as you did for this one and pass on the word to others that might be interested in, in joining the webinar as well. This call is about a response to what we are talking a lot about these days in the news and this pandemic and the shock that it created both in the economy of Canada and also throughout the entire globe. And this is a way of FSC contributing to ways forward, uh, creating resilience, and also new ideas to implement to make the ESQ ecosystems more resilient to this shock and others that may come. So really excited to find innovators across Canada and new partnerships to move us forward in this agenda. And what we're gonna do today during this webinar is really to support those that are applying for the call or planning to. It's a little more information than what we have on the website and also going over a few of the materials um, that might be useful to you as you prepare the application. At the end, we're gonna have some time for Q&A. As Sago get, got it started, please use the Q&A function. That's how, um, it's the best way for us to keep track of all the questions as they come in. Some of them might be quick to respond and we respond right away using the chat, but we'll make sure that at the end, we'll have some time to address questions that may come up from many, many participants. If we don't have time to answer all the questions, that's fine. We have a great page on our website to store all the questions that come in through webinars and also through the email. So all the responses will be uploaded to our website and that's a great resource to you as well. Now, just navigating a little more our, our platform here, we are all in this together, learning how to operate fully online for most of us. So uh, I wanted just to point out the main elements of what you're seeing as, uh, again, on top of what Sago already mentioned to you. So at the, the very top, you're seeing the panelists, all of us. The slides will be always in the same place, which is always very helpful. Then we have the Q&A panel that you can, again, see your own questions, but also questions that came in from other participants. And at the very bottom, you can see the different options to raise your hand, uh, to add another Q&A. And also, if you want to continue to chat, we are welcome, I welcome you to do that as well. Another function that we're gonna be using through this webinar is the polling function. So I'm gonna ask Joanne through the webinar to release the polls, and then you'll see on your screen a quick box that will come on top of your screen uh, asking you to answer a few questions. And that's really a way for us to interact a little more in this world of everything almost online, and also to get to know a little bit uh, about you and what the group that is joining us today um, is about. So with that note, oh, I also wanna mention that this webinar is being recorded. I already saw that question in the Q&A. So we are gonna record the session and then upload the session to the website so we all have that available to you and to others also to pass it on. Joanne, can you release the first poll about how did you hear uh, about the call for proposals? Thank you. So as I go through the next slides, uh, please, put your answer in the, in the poll and then we're gonna re release the results for everyone to see in a little bit. 
without further, further ado, let's start with a little bit about who we are at the Future Skills Center. We just started last year in February 2019, so we are new as an organization. We're also very new as a team. So we have new team members arriving every day, including myself just two weeks ago, which is really exciting. We are funded by the Employment and Social Development Canada, yet we operate at an arm's length from the federal government. And as a center for research and collaboration, our mandate is to help Canadians gain the skills they need to thrive in a workforce that changes all the time. And again, as a new organization, our focus is still being established and evolving uh, as we go, as we find new, new gaps and opportunities for engagement. And so far, our focus has been five different areas. The first of them, innovation projects, is about the investment that FSC makes in community-based projects that test innovative training and upskilling programs for a diversity of regions and populations. And we select these projects through a regular call for proposals. We have deployed over $55 million to date in investments to projects across the entire country via two open calls. So the call that we are talking about today is our third call of our open call um, for projects. For research, we hope to identify emerging skills that are in demand and to better understand the knowledge gaps that exist out there, leading practices and how to improve skills training development for all Canadians across the country. We also promote rigorous evaluation of projects to generate evidence on what works, for whom, and why, and hoping really that this information will help practitioners, service providers, and policymakers to improve the current systems we have in the ecosystem that we operate right now. In engagement stakeholder, as the term, term suggests, we, it's really about encouraging collaboration, how we work with each other, how we extend exchange ideas, share knowledge, as we build this network that we are all interested in really putting forward the agenda of skills development ecosystem. And we also, as we go through these four areas, we want to share results, the res resources that we may find helpful, best practices with all Canadians in accessible ways, using our website, social media, events, community groups, employers, and more. So stay tuned, uh, tuned for our knowledge mobilization activities. All right, so Joanne, can you release the results of the, the first poll? Let's take a look at this. So we have most of you heard from the FSC listserv, which is great. So you're getting our, our emails, social media a little bit. We also through professional networks, that's really exciting to see and word of mouth, which uh, always works well. So thanks folks for, for putting your answers and we'll see a few more of these polls as we go. And now a little bit about the call. So what is the shockproofing the future of work call? A quick overview. The bottom line, as we saw, as we talked about in the beginning, is really to support workers that have been hardly hit by the current pandemic crisis and that need to adapt really quickly to the shock and to develop the skills in probably what's gonna look very different labor, labor market in, uh, in the next little while. This call is for $15 million of investment and what we want to do is not only to fund projects, but really to start building partnerships to create new ways forward, new models to build resilience in the face of shocks uh, like what we're seeing today. So we want to find partnerships to support individuals to help inform training and career paths for workers, especially those who face barriers based on geography, background, or experience. For organizations, we also want to support those that want to adopt new technologies and expand the understanding around new health and safety environment, policy development and program delivery for large and small businesses, government, education institutions and service delivery organizations. We also want to find partners that are willing to break systems and to change the systems we operate by doing new things and adopting innovative approaches to the way that policies and programs are developed and also re-engineering processes that we all are, as organizations already found that we will need to adapt to shocks like what we are seeing today. And uh, who, who can apply? All industries really are welcome to apply, individuals, organizations, consortiums across Canada. And uh, although the lead organization must be a Canadian entity, international partners are welcome to, depart, to be part of the partnerships. 
One uh, point that I want to highlight today is something that we just updated is that lead organizations may submit multiple applications, more than one application for this call, just provided that they have each proposal has very different objectives and a project lead that is different. So for example, universities that have different departments or centers within are welcome to put forward more than one application. Again, just making sure that the goals and the leads are different from across the, the proposals. Which is really exciting for us uh, to be able to provide this opportunity and find more ideas out there. There's no small or big project. We, we are looking for early ideas as small as $25,000 of support and also large scale approaches with exceptional potential for impact that could reach $2.5 million. So it's really, we are trying to find partnerships and ways forward and this is, um, this is our way of saying um, we are open for new ideas. I'd like to release the poll number two, please Joanne, which is about which stream of funding you're hoping to apply. And as you navigate the application materials on the website, you see that we, are, we have three different areas for the projects that you have to follow as you submit your application. For any one of them, the idea is that, to, is that we are looking for innovation, so new ideas, new ways forward. For research, we are really trying to understand what the new skills reality is and how do we generate responsive solutions to this disruption. Networks is really about fostering partnerships, either strengthening current partnerships or establishing new collaborations that specifically engage communities, especially those facing barriers in the face of this shock. And pilots really about conceiving, developing, testing, and scaling new models that are finding ways to close the gaps of skills development in, in Canada. And an important deadline <laughs> in the date is September 1st, 2020. That's the last day that the call will be open for you to apply. There's lots of time to prepare great applications. So we look forward to receiving uh, your proposals by then. All right, I'd like to release the results of poll two, if we have them, Joanne. I would like to wait one minute until we get 80% of our attendees to answer. Wonderful, great, thank you. I will release shortly. Thank you, all right. So as we go through the selection criteria, you see also in the application materials, six core criteria for how we're gonna be looking at this project. I can release it now, Desiree. Go for it. Okay. There we Thank go. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thanks, Joanne. All right, so a lot of us um, are deciding which stream you're going to apply. A lot of them innovation projects, really excited to see that, but also 33 research and 42 network. That's very, very exciting to see a balance across the streams. And we hope that the guidelines will also help you navigate the differences that we are, um, are looking for in each project, each type of project. So as, as I was saying, we have six or criteria. And what I want to do here today is provide a little more information than what we have uh, on the guidelines and the website to help you prepare your proposals for each one of the criteria. So for the first one, in terms of relevance, what we're really looking for is a clear target group, especially if, uh, making a strong case for how the group that you're targeting have been hardly hit by the current pandemics. That's really important. Of course, alignment with the goals of the cause. Again, looking for new ways to promote resilience in the face of a social economic shock like COVID-19. And especially for research projects, uh, it's very important that we uh, expect a well-grounded project on literature and relevant literature as you build your proposal. In terms of impact, what we're looking for is potential to strengthen the skill ecosystem, the capacity of the ecosystem. And for research specifically, a conceptual framework that grounds really well your research question and your activities. For network and engagement strategies with key audiences, with partners, with groups that have been maybe underserved and not included in previous projects, it's very important. And for pilots, based on the identified needs that, that, you, that you put forward in your proposal, how you're gonna impact and address those needs is also a very important point to, to explore in your proposal materials. Coherence, as the, the name suggests, really is about the connection between what you want to do and what you're proposing to do. So for research, is your methodology linking really well with your research question? 
for network and pilot projects is about how your activities talk to each one of your objectives and having a very clear work plan with a timeline of what you hope to achieve and also how that links to an adequate budget are elements that are very important in this in this proposal in this call for proposals i'd like to release poll three joanne if possible that talks about this uh, the type of organization we present as i go over thank you um, the capacity criterion we're looking for here in uh, with a very um and a very linked skills, experience, and resources across the partner organizations and also the lead organization to do the work well. And very specified team roles will also help the proposal be successful. Who does what and when and who takes responsibility over the overall project, but also over components of the projects. In math, dance, learning, and knowledge mobilization, we would like to see, or we're looking for opportunities to engage different audiences in their research findings for research projects and for network and pilots, how you are tracking your progress and documenting and using that information to learn throughout the project and also to share knowledge with others. In equity, diversity, inclusion, a point that's very important is, is highlight how you plan to involve end users throughout the entire cycle of the project. So, and design and implementation and also in the evaluation of the activities. And also it's helpful to explain how your project may further equity, diversity, and inclusion principles uh, along with the cycle of the project. Specifically for pilots and network projects, it's also very important to lay out how your organization um, deals with policies, practices, and activities that support equity, diversity, and inclusion. And for research, we really are looking for research projects that promote these principles, but also that inform, use these principles to inform how this, the research is being designed, analyzed, and shared uh, with the broader community. And we do have additional criteria for pilot projects in recognition that projects may be in many different stages of the innovation cycle. So for those projects that are in the early stages of innovation, we are looking for innovative solutions, different approaches and new models that maybe have some evidence, but it's not fully being proved yet. And we recognize that. What we're gonna be looking for in those specific projects is how this support can take you to the next stages of the innovation cycle and help you advance. For projects that are later in, this, in the innovation cycles, we are looking for interventions that are well-designed, they're different, they're novel, and also very clear clear theory of change of how your activities will take you to the final outcomes. And we do provide a theory of change template that help you do that, that exercise and document it in the, in the proposal materials that we're gonna share later with you. If possible, Joanne, can we release the, the results of the, the poll three? Thank you. All right, so we are seeing here a lot of community-based organizations, post-secondary institutions, some employers, some employer associations, and other training and education association. I also welcome for those who select others in the polls to feel free to share in the chat what type of organization um, you, you're representing today. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the review process. It's just a quick overview. I don't wanna to take too much time, but I wanna actually save more time for questions and answers. So I'll just do a quick overview of the, the review proposal. It's very simple, really. Uh, first, we start with the screening of the, all the projects for relevance um, by subject matter experts at FSC. And then we take these proposals to expert committees that will review the proposals uh, using the criteria that we just went over together. It's important to highlight that these reviews are independent assessments and it's around 20 reviewers that we have in our committees reviewing these proposals. Joanne, can you please release poll four? Thank you. So we're asking if you have applied for funding for the Future Skills Center before. In terms of timing for these proposals, we're going to run a continuous intake and review of proposals until the call closes on September 1st of this year. So we aim to have funding decisions within a month of submission, and we're going to announce soon how we, the, the award announcements will come later. 
And now this is the, the last piece of our session before Q&A. And if possible, uh, Joanne, as soon as you have, please release the, the results of the, of the poll. So what you have available to you as you plan your project and prepare the project materials. There are a few forms and templates to help you put this material together. We have the project application form, as I mentioned, a few exchange template and also a budget template. And there's a lot of information available to you on our website. We have clear guidelines. We have the frequently asked questions page that I mentioned earlier in a framework of common outcomes. So you can understand a little more in detail what we're looking for in terms of shared, shared goals. And then we're having this webinar today. We are going to record it and make available to all of you. And we might also have a webinar later in the summer before the call, the call closes. And here we have the, the poll results. So, uh, all right, so we have a lot of people that haven't applied, uh, but some of them have. That's great. Thanks, Joanne. And here is just uh, the link to our call for proposals page on our website. And I just want to highlight a few points here that might be helpful for you to know today. So there is a downloadable guidelines in PDF where we have all of this that I went over with you in detail. Uh, the frequently asked questions, I want to highlight again how important this resource is. Uh, our team is working really hard to intake all the questions and to upload the answers to our website in real time. So this is a page that is constantly updated and we hope that this is a resource for you as you put together your proposals. And I also want to mention that for each type of project, so the innovation pilot projects, research and network, there's a different form that you need to use to apply. And as you click in these links, it will take you to a different platform called Cognito, where you're gonna enter your information, that information will arrive directly to us. So please make sure as you define your research stream, or sorry, your project stream, that you use the right form. Joanne, can you please release the fifth poll? Sorry, the fifth poll. Thank you. So we, we just want to know a little bit about the focus of your work in terms of where in Canada that's happening. And with that, I want to stop here and move us to the Q&A.